Who's going to set the scene? <coughs> it's a couple of years after the Hijrah. The Battle of Badr has just taken place. The Muslims in Medina are rejoicing and reminiscing the events that took place in the battle. <coughs> Telling stories about some of the courageous events and some of the more courageous combatants from them. <coughs> and talking about the people that they had taken prison from the heads of the Quraysh and so on and so forth. So, on the other side, the other camp in Mecca, the Quraysh are in a state of lament and in a state of sadness about what's happened. Speaking of the top boys of Quraysh being <coughs> killed or taken prisoner and how they showed such cowardice when they thought they were something else and how they underestimated the Muslim <coughs> Amongst these people who were lamenting was Umayr ibn Wahab. He was sitting close to the Kaaba amongst a few of his friends and speaking of what happened. <coughs> he said to one of his friends who was called uh, Safwan ibn Umayyah who his father had been killed <coughs> in Badr and who was one of the top boys of Quraysh and he now inherited his father's empire. He said to him that what an odious day it was on Badr. And Safwan concurred. He said, yeah, that was the, probably the worst day of my life, watching my father being killed <coughs> and watching my own people running away from a number of Muslims that didn't really count to a third of what we were. Terrible times. So Umair says to Safwan <coughs> that if it wasn't for my debts and the fear of my family perishing behind me, I would go to Medina right now and I'll give Muhammad what he deserves and I'll rid us of his tyranny. And then he whispered to him so that he was the only one that could hear that my son, Umayyad ibn Wahab had a son, his son was taken prisoner in the Battle of Badr. And he said, and my son in Medina gives me every right to go there and do this. So Safwan had an idea, had an epiphany. He said, okay, why don't you go there under the guise that you want to free your son but instead do what your heart tells you to do as in assassinate the prophets of Allah if you're worried about your debts I'm a rich man I'll take care of those debts for you if you're worried about your family I will bring your family into my family and I will look after them so you have nothing to fear. So Umayr, he curled the strands of hair in his beard, thought about it for a bit, and said, okay, fine, but keep this between me and you. No one is to know about our conversation. So he said, okay. So Umayr ibn Wahab gets ready. And he doesn't really need to get much ready. What he needs is his sword and a bit of determination and whatever he needs to get him from Makkah to Medina so he does so but he's a little twist to the, uh, to the story here he instead of just taking a normal sword he ladens that sword and covers it with a poison a snake poison or some other type of uh, animal or reptile so that even a mere scratch would end the life of whoever is afflicted by it so he does this and he goes and he arrives at Medina and the time that he arrives in the <coughs> companions of the Prophet وسلم, and at the head of them Umar are sitting in the masjid and they're reminiscing Badr talking about what they did and who did it and how they did it and how amazing it was 
And Omar had one of those corner of your eye moments where you're just standing there and you look at the corner of your eye and something catches your eye and you turn and it's your long lost friend. Or, but in this situation it happened to be Umayr ibn Wahab. So Umar radiallahu turned and saw Umayr ibn Wahab and was shocked. What's he doing? So he said to his companions, watch out for this guy. He has not come for good. This guy holds in his heart an evil. I remember him in Mecca. He used to persecute us. And I remember him at the Battle of Badr. He was the spy for the Quraysh that came to check our numbers and scout for them. <clears throat> so go to the Prophet وسلم, and guard him. So he stood up and he went directly to Umair, grabbed him by the collar. And we know Umar is uh, got some, uh, some anger in him sometimes. So he grabbed him by the collar and started shaking him. What are you doing here? You have no right to be here. I can see it in your eyes. You don't intend good. So he puts him in a headlock. And then I'm taking you to the Prophet. So he grabs him in that headlock and he drags him to the Prophet. The Prophet says, he hears the commotion, he's in the masjid at the time. He hears the commotion outside the masjid, so he gets up and he comes. And he sees Umar ibn Wahab in Umar's headlock. And Umar is not like you know, the weakest of men, he's pretty strong. And when he puts you in the headlock, it's going to hurt. So Umar ibn Wahab is in that situation, and the Prophet is looking at him and says, Umar, let him go. What are you doing? Right. Leave him alone. So he lets him go and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this man, he's come for, for evil. He's not, he's not coming to do any good. So the Prophet looked at him and says, oh, Umar, why have you come? So he says to him, I've come to, uh, to take the place of my son. Let my son go free and let me take his place. So the Prophet looked down and saw the sword wrapped around his waist on his belt and said, so what is that doing here with you? So he said, Umar ibn Wahab, going red-faced, said to him, it's rubbish, it doesn't mean anything. If it meant anything, it would have helped us on the Battle of Badr, but you have nothing to fear. So the Prophet said to him, Umair, why have you come? And he said, Wallahi, you have only come for my son. So the Prophet shook his head and said, Umair, why have you come? So Umair was like, oh, Wallahi, you have only come for this, I want my son. And the whole time he's thinking, how do I get, how do I, I'm going to take, take, take my sword out and just, you know, give it to him. But how do I do it? He's waiting for the opportune moment. So the Prophet sallam, said to him, you have not come for your son. You have come because you sat next to the Kaaba with your friend Safwan ibn Umayyah and you both conspired to assassinate me. You were afraid of the debts that you had left behind. You were afraid to leave your family. So Safwan, he took care of that for you. And that's why you have come. SubhanAllah. So Umayr is dumbstruck, shocked, can't believe it. And one of the things between the Arabs is they don't tell each other secrets. If you tell someone this is a secret between me and you, he's going to take you to the grave. So he was completely taken aback by the fact that the Prophet knew what he knew and he knew it in such detail and he knew the very words that were said so Umayr ibn Wahhab he realizes at that point this man is the Prophet this man is the Messenger so he says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka Rasulullah I, I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that you Muhammad are the Messenger of Allah so when he says this, everyone else is shocked. Whoa, Allah Akbar. Almost like, oh, I just had this guy in a headlock and now he's Muslim? SubhanAllah. So he says to him that, verily, Umayr ibn Wahhab, a pig was more beloved to me than this man when he entered Medina. And now he is more beloved to me than my children. So Umayr ibn Wahhab, he sticks around in Medina. He wants to learn the Quran, he wants to learn about Islam, he wants to take from the character and the teachings of the Prophet he wants that spiritual uplift so he sticks around in Medina for a little while meanwhile Safwan ibn Umayyah in Mecca is thinking what has happened to this man I just sent him away I just paid all his debts I'm taking care of his family he told, he, he told me he's going to do something and he hasn't done it 
Because the word hasn't spread that the Prophet has passed away, has been killed. And there's no word of Umair. So the only conclusion that he could come to was that he had been killed. On the way, one of his companions had found him, altercation, he died. And he couldn't fathom that Umair ibn Wahhab had entered into Islam. So a few months passed, and Umair, after learning what he learned, wanted to go back to Mecca and start propagating Islam and teach his old friends. So he asked the Prophet, you know, do you give me permission to go back and teach? So the Prophet said, yes, of course, go. So he went back to Mecca. And the first person he saw was Safwan ibn Umayyah, his old friend. And Safwan, he's disappointed, but he realizes it was a, a you know, massive feat and very difficult thing to achieve. So no hard feelings, you tried. So Umayyah ibn Wahab is like looking down. He says to Safwan, you know, I went there and the Prophet knew about our conversation. Rasulullah, he knew what we said, what we spoke about, and what we conspired. So Safwan looks at him and says, What do you mean, Rasulullah? What are you talking about? He's Muhammad. And he's like, oh, Safwan, I'm a Muslim now. <laughs> Safwan, no, it can't be. How can you enter into this deen? He is our enemy. And he was, he was angry. So Safwan, from that day onwards, didn't care about the debts, about his children, about, he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that day forth, and from the very day that he was born, was taking care of him. So he went, he took his family, and from that day on he called people to Islam in Mecca, and around Mecca, Mecca and it was, it was a faithful companion to the Prophet وسلم, until the day he died. So radiallahu anhu, wa, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from his life and be inspired. Wa jazakumullahu khairan for listening.